hey, how you guys doing? So don't like think the world is ending, but I'm doing another vlog. Ah, I have a little bit of time now. I'm going to try and get one or two out before I hit vacation. Is it vacation yet? No, a little bit more time left. This is a lovely email from Jake Eddy, or Eddie, Jake, who is in London, who is a cellist. And um, he's a student at Cambridge and tries to take influence from a lot of different, uh, from, particularly from singers, but a lot of different musicians. And he talks about getting into character and how this has influenced him. And he's curious about it. And his basic question is, how do you go about getting into character? Simple question. Uh, something I hold as paramount and essential and really one of the fundamental things that you have to be able to do as an opera singer. That as well as having a bankable technique. Um, the vocal technique should give you the freedom to make any choice that you want on stage. And we can talk about character as an opera singer, very important, but it's going to be limited in terms of what you can actually apply until you have that rock salad, rock salad foundation that allows you to make those choices. The choices that an actor would on, in reading a play, shouting, screaming, grovelly, whisper, without any body, all these kinds of things. We need that same palette of colors to choose from vocally. However, it's imperative that we do it in a healthy way vocally. So arching over this entire discussion is that assumption that you are working all the time more and more and more to have a free technique based totally on the breath that allows you to make those choices. That having been said, I think in some ways it's the easiest thing in the world. It's not something I think a lot about. I just assume that I'm in character. Wonderful. I, there's a, um, I'll try and see if I can scroll it here and find it. There's a wonderful conversation I had with one of my favorite stage directors, Leonard Folia. I had the immense pleasure of doing Dead Man Walking with him in New York and then in Houston. And we've since, since become very good friends. And I pick his brain a lot about the, the art of theater and acting. And he basically said to me one time, we were getting ready to leave the rehearsal room of Dead Man Walking where we had created this very intimate space. And really it was like we were all in, in a play and, and quite close. And we were about to go on stage into the Wortham Center of Houston, which is, feels as big as the size of Texas. And I said, Jake, I pulled him aside. I said, don't let me get too big for the opera house. And he said, Joyce, he goes, there's a thing. There's only two things that exist on stage. That which is true and that which is false. And he said, true can be really big and it can be really small. And false can be really big or really small. But there's really no middle ground between that, between those points. And my goal is always to be true on stage. As opera singers, we have a lot going for us because normally, let's say nine times out of ten, nine and a half times out of ten, the composer has given us a very clear blueprint and structure about the emotional inner life of these characters through the rhythm, through the silences, through the melody, through the articulation, through the dynamics. It's really so much of the work is done for you, particularly in later music. Sometimes you have to be a bit, a bit more inventive with Handel, Monteverdi, etc. But all of those elements are there. And then you simply become the actor. You ask a lot of questions. Why? Why am I here? What's my objective? What do I need from this? And I know this will sound very elementary, but we're going on stage and essentially we're pretending. I want to be the best um, player of the game of pretend. Let's pre let's pretend when you're a kid. Let's play. I'll play. I'll be a a surgeon and you be a, I don't know, the patient. And oh, okay, it's a terrible <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> 
See, I was going to say I'll be the doctor, and then that just goes into a whole nother discussion. No, anyway, you get the idea. And so, for t right now I'm in Zurich and I'm playing Romeo. And this is a character that couldn't be further from me. And yet when I'm on stage, and when I'm singing that role, I am Romeo. There's no question about the, the urgency to fight that I have, the love I have for Giulietta, the um, despondency and the despair that I feel, the frustration of all of that. I am just 100% in the character, which means, we've talked about this before, that quiet little voice inside. I have to leave all of that aside, the second guessing, the doubting, the judgment, the constant anal analyzing, the, um, that was terrible, that was terrible, that, ooh, that was really good, that was, no, that was terrible. I have to leave all of that aside because the second I start engaging in that voice, my energy is not going towards the character and that's where I want it 100% of the time. Essentially, I'm pretending, but I'm pretending with every fiber of my being. I'll give you one last example. Um, I was doing a master class in my hometown of Kansas City, and it was with eighth graders, seventh and eighth graders, at my old elementary school, where my fabulous sister happens to still teach music, and so I go up there whenever I can, and they were getting ready to put on The Little Mermaid. And I was sitting there thinking, why didn't I get to do The Little Mermaid when I was in school? We did terrible musicals. <laughs> they get The Little Mermaid. Anyway, I'm sure I would have been Ursula. However, and not that I wouldn't have been Ariel. I would have wanted to have been Ariel, but I would have been cast as Ursula. Anyway, uh, I, I did the master class with a couple of kids, and they were typically shy and nervous and self-conscious and all this. And the girl comes up who's singing Ursula. And she had obviously been practicing in the mirror. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And she came out and she had choreography and she had these light balls in her hand that was like she was the magic when she was flying them around. And it came down to this one thing and she was really owning it. And it came down to the one thing. She took one of these like magic little light power balls that she was using in her head and she took it and she threw it at us and she went, and looked away. And I was like, wait, 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 wait one second. I said, I saw the ball here, right? You had it. It was magic. It was powerful. It was all great. I saw it. And then I saw you throw it. And then I lost it because you didn't follow through. So I said, do me a favor. I said, see this ball as you're singing and as you watch it, and you watch it and it either lands where you want it to or it doesn't, but you see it. And I kid you not, she went back and did it. And every kid in that class went, Phew. they saw the ball. Here's the thing. If you're in stage, or if, if you, let's say you're playing the cello, and you're making these images in your mind, or you're in character on stage, if you see it, we will see it in the audience. If you're seeing it 96%, we won't see it. If you're the least bit vague about it, we won't see it. If you're vague about taking the stage, if you're vague about delivering a recitative, if you're vague about delivering uh, uh, an articulation that has meaning and or this, whatever it is, it has to be 100% delivered. And I come back to my first point. We can only really do that until we have this rock solid technique. So. Artists, be patient with yourself. You're talking about building layers here, okay? And it's a process and it takes a while, uh, but you will get it. And you will get it in stages and it will develop and it will um, it'll surprise you. But what I beg of you, I don't care if you're playing in the orchestra, I don't care if you're the lead role, I don't care if you're singing Kate Pinkerton, Yellow did I, or if you're singing Ursula in sixth grade, go out there and have so much respect for the stage that you don't dare pretend or, or fake it. You're actually pretending, but don't fake it because we see it 100%. Be really brave, take the leap, and when you go there, it's like you're flying. It's, it's an exceptional thing, but there's no middle ground. It's either true 
or it's not. Okay, Jake, I hope that answers your question. Voila, that's another blog. Okay, see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.